And I want you to think about um, what those treasures are that you hold on to uh, that you may not even realize are, are yours for, for use, for, for the giving too. So this morning, I want to talk to you about seven simple laws of success. And I'm going to encourage you to write these down. I think you're going to find this to be really helpful for you as you're thinking about your goals for 2022 uh, and for anything that you really want to accomplish. So let's just get right, right into it. So seven simple laws of success. Number one, Work on and focus on what you already know. Work on and focus on what you already know. In other words, that's really how you develop mastery. As a coach, I don't spend a lot of time helping people overcome their weaknesses. We want to really look at where are you naturally strong? Where do you excel? What areas can you really master? Because as you master those areas, it will give you the credibility. It will give you um, the the. I think effortless way to really pursue your goals at a high level because you're in your strength zone, right? And your emotions start to line up with that because it's what you do and what you know well. So that's number one is, is really focus on what you know and learn to master it. Number two, simple, so again, these are the seven simple laws of success. Number two, know the, the rules and know the parameters of what you're working in. So in other words, if you're working hard to build a big real estate business, what are the opportunities in this industry? What are the rules of engagement? Um, and that can be across many different uh, factions of the business, right? And this can apply to any business. So when you think about marketing yourself and leveling up in the image and branding that you want to create for your business, what are the rules of engagement today when it comes to marketing, right? The way that we marketed a product or service 10 years ago is completely irrelevant today. And the way that we marketed and, and uh, promoted a product or service even a year ago could be completely different today. So what rules or, um, you know, what do you need to know about the landscape that you're in, right? What do you need to know about your competition? What do you need to know about your industry? What do you need to know about the ways to be successful and to level up and to stand out from, from the rest? So I think um, that's important. Now, I'm going to give you a, a, a 2B to this, 2B. Uh, that was 2A. 2B is once you know the rules, don't be afraid to be out of the box a little bit. Don't be afraid to get creative and to start to come out of the lines of whatever it is that you're learning about uh, the world that you're in. So it's okay to sometimes in business break the rules just in the sense of being creative and coming out of, out of the box. All right, number three. This is a big one, guys. Put a star next to it. We're talking about the seven simple laws of success. Number three, embrace failure. No one achieves success without experiencing failure. No one's ever achieved success without experiencing failure. And so you have to realize that this is a part of the journey and that some things that you set out to do, even though you might have a great vision in your mind and you worked out a strategic plan, it may or may not work out. And so a part of being successful is knowing that we have to fail forward right? It's failing forward. And so without failure, we can't learn. Without failure, we can't readjust, right? So think about something that um, in, in, any, in any area of your life, think about something that didn't work out the way you thought it would, right? Or think about something that was difficult, right? Would you really want to go back and change it? I hope the answer is no, because I think when you look back on that, you can probably pull out a lot of learning from it. Am I right? You can see how that, that failure helped you to get even more strategic. It helped you to identify some things that maybe you missed in your planning. It helped you develop skills. It helped you develop some part of your, your character, your ability to be tenacious and resilient. Um, and so Bill Gates has been quoted as saying, success is a lousy teacher. 
Success is a lousy teacher. We can only learn through the failure. So we have to embrace that failure is part of the journey of success. And so we are, we're going to find that we're going to miss our way to success many times. And that in the misses are the deepest learning opportunities. And that's how we are going to really develop more of our A game is through those failures. So that's a big one. Okay, number four, this is kind of expanding a little bit more on number one. Uh, I want to talk specifically about the strength zone, the strength zone. Uh, and I think that, again, we can spend a lot of time, maybe wasted time, working to overcome our weaknesses rather than getting clear about our strengths. And there's lots of assessments you can take. Um, a really good assessment that I recommend uh, is Strength Finders 2.0. There's a short book you can read that's a companion to it. Uh, you can go right online, find this information. And there's an assessment you can take and it'll help you identify your top five strengths. And I think that we need to know what our strengths are so that we can get into that strength zone and really develop more skills around our strengths rather than taking a lot of time to overcome a weakness that is probably a weakness for a very good reason, right? And so if you are um, working out of your strength zone, you will know it because it's very stressful, right? But when you are working in your strength zone, it almost seems like things fall into place so easy because they do. And um, I think that we have to acknowledge that in our personal growth plans, we have to get better at the things we already do good. So write that down, get better at the things you already do good um, because that's where you're really gonna shine. And that's really where you're going to see exponential results and growth around your goals, right? So, um, and, and here's the thing, I, I know for a lot of us who are high achievers, uh, we want to we want to focus on ways to develop the tools in our toolbox, right? I know that's true for me, but we have to acknowledge that just because we're good in one area doesn't mean we're automatically going to be good in another area, right? So, it, in your pursuit of mastery and in your pursuit of knowledge, get clear about where you need to put your energy. It's not going to be in everything, right? We can't be good at everything. And so we can waste a lot of time in that pursuit rather than just developing mastery. This is what I would write down. Develop mastery around the things I'm already strong at. Develop mastery for my, my strength zone. All right. So this morning we're talking about the seven simple laws of success and we're on number five. So number five, outwork your competition outwork your competition. What does that mean? It means knowing number one, who is your comp competition? So regardless of the business you're in, doing a competitive analysis is so essential. So in that competitive analysis, I would be identifying my top three to five competitors and what makes them the top of their game, right? Looking at how they provide value, service, what is their message, um, how are they uh, supporting their clients? How are they being innovative, right? How are they staying at the top of their game? And so as you understand that, you can use that strategically in your own plan. And does anyone want to know how to become number one in their field? Okay, I'm sure you do. Here's the answer. You have to work smarter than everybody else. And it's not always about working harder, it's about working smarter. Because sometimes we're putting a lot of effort into working harder, but we're not being strategic. And so if, if you and I sat down together to play Monopoly, and you came to that board game to have a good afternoon and have some fun, but I came to that board game to win the game, would, we, would you and I be playing very differently? say yes, right? Because I would be playing very strategic because my goal is to win. So think about that in terms of your business every day. Are you getting up every day with the intention to win the game? And if you are, then you're working very smart and you're working very strategic and you're working to outsmart the competition. And I think that these are the nuances that we need to focus on. Sometimes it's something small that your competition is not doing really well, that you can get into that lane and create opportunity around that. 
right? And so it's it's knowing your industry, it's knowing your competition, um, and knowing that this has got to be a part of your thinking on a regular basis, right? So you have to sustain that thinking about how do I get better every day, right? And how do I focus on being someone who shows up to win the game by playing to, to win and by working smarter rather than harder. All right, number six. Are you getting some good stuff this morning? Hopefully you guys on Facebook, let me know that you're getting some good stuff this morning. I love your feedback. Uh, and at the end, I want you to tell me which one resonated with you with you the most. Okay, number six, invest in yourself. Now, I realize that many of you, because you're a part of this group and you come in on these calls and you watch the videos, uh, this is probably something that, you know, you're going to nod your head to and understand that it's important. Yet, I'm going to challenge you to really examine how deep you take your learning, right? How deep do you take your learning? Because if we don't take time to grow our skills and our ourselves, will we continue to, you know, really sustain the business that we're in? Will we be able to really match the needs of the changing world around us? And, and will we stay relevant? So there's a few important words in that, right? Uh, sustainability, being relevant. And, and those are the questions I would ask myself as a business owner uh, or, you know, as a professional today. Uh, what am I doing to invest in myself? So I want to be clear too, many of you might be working for someone else and that's okay. This is very applicable, right? Because how do you, well, how do you stay in the game and rise to the top and, and make sure that your company sees the value you bring, right? It's about investing in ourselves. So I do a personal growth plan every year and it's where I get really um, intentional about uh, the things I want to do to learn and grow and develop the skills I already have. Uh, and so it's, it's going to be about books I want to read. I, I get intentional about events I want to go to, classes I might want to take, experiences I want to have, uh, the people that I want to surround myself with. And um, I love to work on that at this time of the year. And it takes effort. It takes a little time and energy because I'll, I'll research and start looking at what books I should be reading. And sometimes I'm also, uh, and I'm sure you are too, right? You're getting suggestions all year long. And now I go back in my notes, I keep journal notes and I go back and then I start to look at, oh, right. I heard about that book at that meeting back in April. It's gonna be on my growth plan. I wanna read that in January. And, and this is how we can get really intentional about our growth. And I think that um, we put a lot of time and energy into planning and getting strategic on a, a lot of things, yet do we put that same energy in ourselves? And uh, I'm going to be uh, talking to you very soon about a workshop I'm doing in January, um, and it's going to be called Building Your Life by Design. And one of the elements in that workshop is going to be how to really get focused on intentional growth and get specific in those areas. So look out for information on that really soon. Um, so I just want to, again, you know, in terms of investing in yourself, it's, it's really, I think, also about realizing that if we're not growing, we're probably dying. So if we're not figuring out how we can expand our knowledge and really drill down into those areas that we want to master and how we can apply that to winning at life and winning at our careers and our businesses, um, if we don't have the confidence to bet on ourselves and do that for ourselves, Really, why would we expect anyone else to put that level of confidence in us? In other words, why do people want to do business with you if you're not willing to always be at the top of your game, right? So this may be something you want to set as a goal from today's call is to work on that personal growth plan. And, um, and I think that as we do work through a personal growth plan, not only do we see our skills improve, but we see our confidence really grows. We see our ability to manage you know, conflict and difficult situations becomes easier. So there's just never ending reasons why this is something that um, I think everyone should focus on. All right, number seven is to never forget why you got into this business in the first place. 
So never forget your why is how I would sum up number seven. Never forget your why. What passions, what dreams, you know, what brought you into this career or business that you're in? And do you stay connected to that every day? And I know it's challenging. Look, sometimes, you know, uh, whatever we're doing from day to day can really get, you know, it can, it can kind of take the wind out of our sails a little bit. But I think that what brings us back to center is number one, having a why and knowing it and being connected to it, keeping it right in front of us so that we can keep the passion, right? We can keep the reasons why we started this journey right here in front of us and allow that to create the drive that we need to get to the next level and to continue, right? So I think, you know, when you really find that you've been spending a lot of time working in your business and not so much on your business, it can suck some of that energy out. And I think that we have to, you know, recognize that if we let go of the passion, it's going to affect our ability to be creative. It's going to affect our ability to think strategic. Um, And so as a leader in your own life and as a leader in your own business, um, you know, ask yourself, what will it take for you to get to the next level? Right. And what does the next level look like? That's a great question I would work on. What does the next level look like for you? Just sketch it out, you know, and and write down what that looks like for you Um, and and realize that all the things that we just talked about this morning are part of this journey, you know, to success. And I think that for those of us who want to stay at the top of our game, we know that it's about tweaking and growing and evolving and getting more strategic and and taking the time to to plan and taking the time to, I think, be aware. And what my goal was for you this morning um, is, is really to raise your awareness to some of these elements of success and to give you an opportunity to ask yourself Am I really taking time to reflect? So, you know, like for instance, uh, when we looked at, what number was it? Number three, embrace failure, number three. Um, Do you take some time to sit and reflect on what's working, what's not working? Do you take time to actually articulate lessons you learned from something that was a failure or a misstep? Do you um, really sit down and recognize it and identify what your strengths are and and how to get into that zone and create a personal growth plan that allows you to elevate in that area? You know, are you getting really specific and aware around who your competition is and putting time on your calendar to do that kind of competitive analysis? So my goal this morning was for you to find one thing on this list to start with anyway, that you want to put more energy to or kind of shine a light to. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, hi, Joe. I was just going to say, I'm going to ask if anyone has any ahas or takeaways from this morning. So good morning. Good morning. I think that number three, you know, I, and, but I apologize. I can't, I'm on my phone. I can't well, that's okay. be seen, I don't think. Um, the embracing of failure. I like to yeah. look at it as a stepping stone, yes. you know, making your way so that the word failure just seems so loaded. (laughs) So rather just couch it as a, you know, sort of the journey um, in in a learning curve versus the term failure. Well, you could also use the term uh, like it's sort of like a baseball analogy, right? Like instead of hitting the ball, you miss the ball, right? So in, in the misses, right, where we miss our way to success, Again, what is the learning opportunity? So that's something that I, I'm fortunate to say I learned early on in my career was, you know, that I need to take a time out. Um, Gary Keller talks about this in the MREA book is playing red light, green light, right? Taking the time out right. to say what's working, what's not working. And it's okay to say, you know, what, what part did I serve in this? And it's not to have a blame game kind of, you know, getting down on ourselves. It's to take stock of what we had some responsibility for, what's, where's our DNA in it? Because when we identify that, then we can find a way to correct it so that we can move forward. So, you know, it's really, I think, um, it's, it's just part of the behavioral profile of someone who understands and wants to be, you know, a high achiever, success-minded. Yeah, yeah. I like the fact that what you're pointing out is, you know, as life is what it is, that it's our responsibility really to pay attention to it and what 
and what the twists and turns are because if we don't it's going <laughs> to unfortunately repeat itself so right i mean right write this down too listen life is not happening to you life is not happening to you it's happening for you and so that's that's your opportunity really again to shift your mindset and realize that you are the star of the show right all right. these Another analogy, you, you're the writer of the, of the book, right? And so if you want to take a back seat and, and believe that life is just happening to you and, and uh, that you don't have as much control over everything, then I have to say, my friends, you're being a victim, right? But if you really want to thrive in your own life, in your, in your work, and in anything that you set out to do, then it's understanding that you have the ability to create your outcomes based on how you're thinking, based on the actions you take. And so when something doesn't quite go the way you thought, you just have to backtrack and say, okay, how would I change my thinking the next time? How would I change what I did the next time? What different choices do I have, right? So the, the miss or the failure is a beautiful opportunity to have almost like, you know, a, a, a second shot at it. Maybe it's going to look a little different, but you have an opportunity now to identify where to make adjustments. And uh, that's where that's where we develop too, right? If everything was easy, we would never have the ability to develop our skills and to you know expand our strengths because we won't, you know, it doesn't take as much effort. So this is really the the you know the possibilities are endless in, in terms of our own growth. So thanks, Jill. Anybody else have any comments or thoughts before we get on to our day today? or want to share which one of these resonated with you the most? Yeah, I do. Hi, Diana, good morning. Hi, how are you? Yeah. Um, I really like to embrace the failure too. I'm, I'm, you definitely learn from your mistakes, but I like that uh, you should stay relevant and work smarter and focus on what you know. Yes, 100%. So are you clear about what that is or is that something you have to get a little bit more specific about? Well, no. Um, I mean, I'm new in my real estate career and I had a background in, in college. I studied graphic design and advertising. So I'm using all my graphics and advertising background to market myself in Beautiful. my real estate career. With And I had a sales background prior to real estate in the fashion industry. So I'm using all of my skills and focusing on what I know and really trying to push forward with using what I know. That's great. And applying, I love it it. To, and applying it to what I'm doing now. That's awesome. So I, I want to say this too. You might identify some other things that are important to your business or to any, you know, any of our businesses that we need to put some energy into yet. Is it, is it in your strength zone, right? So the difference would be then you could hire someone or leverage yourself somehow with technology so that it, it, it's, it's important to the business, but it may not be the thing that you have to put a lot of time and energy into because it may just not be in your strength zone. So that's really great, Diana. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for being here this morning. Uh, we can keep the conversation going certainly on the Facebook page. I would love for you to share some thoughts or your takeaways from this morning's mojo. I think it encourages other people uh, to plug in and also for them to start thinking about what resonates with them. So I think sharing gives all of us permission to kind of think too. Uh, so I always welcome your thoughts on the Facebook page. And if you find value in this Monday morning mojo, please share this with your friends. I'm seeing the community is growing and it's really exciting. Um, and, and that's really, you know, why I do this is so that we can inspire some thoughts and we can really encourage people to look at their, their life and their business in a new way. And I think when we do that, um, it creates a ripple effect and we can really change the world around us. And so we know that there's enough negativity out there and we have to find more ways to get into an environment and get into space with people who think bigger and who think in terms of production, who think in terms of values and contributing back to the world. So share this with your friends um, and uh, let's grow the community. Thanks again for being here. You guys are such a blessing to me. I will see you next Monday. Have a great day. Enjoy. Take care. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.